All right, it's Vol Force One, and welcome back. Uh, we are going to real quick look. We're at week 11 of the 2021 season. This is the second season here in the Iceman Dynasty as uh, Casey Clausen, the offensive coordinator with, with uh, uh, Coastal Carolina, is where we currently are. So to start this episode, let's look at the top stories around the country. First of all, sunken feeling. Memphis still in shock after losing their first game of the season. They, lo- they fall to Cincinnati, and the Tigers drop to number 17. So they will not repeat. Central Florida's uh, accomplishment last year of going unbeaten and making it to the college football playoff. Oklahoma stays unbeaten as they um, defeat TCU 56-34, but the Sooners have dropped to number five. They're outside of the college football playoff right now, so they got to keep winning. Uh, big, ACC, <laughs> big ACC win as Miami over Florida State. The Hurricanes move to 3-2 and two in the ACC. Florida State drops their first game of the season. They are 7-1, 5-1 in conference play. And it was Ole Miss falling to Vanderbilt, 38-24. By the way, the Rebels had defeated Nebraska. Uh, so they, they were coming off of that win over Nebraska. I guess they were up in the clouds, and Vanderbilt shocked them as the Commodores are ranked number 25 right now. Uh, Georgia. Knocks off Florida, 28 to 12. Big win for the Bulldogs as they are now still the uh, undefeated and number one in the country. And this week we'll be seeing LSU and Alabama, both teams trying to avoid a third loss. As we look real quick at the uh, LSU schedule, they've lost to Mississippi and Texas A&M. Meanwhile, Alabama has lost to Texas A&M and Tennessee. The Vols with a shocker, 20 to 10 uh, upset win over the Tide. Uh, that means Texas a and must be in control of the Western Division. Uh, we'll, maybe we'll do it a special episode and looking at conference standings later. This week, you've got Clemson and Florida State. A huge ACC matchup there as the Tigers try to um, recover. Uh, well, sorry, the Seminoles try to recover from that loss to Miami. Um, meanwhile, Clemson trying to win their sixth in a row and uh, make it back after losing to North Carolina earlier this season. And... It was a laugher in Austin as Texas apparently crushes Texas Tech 37 to 7. The uh, Longhorns now uh, 5 and 2. They're 3 and 2 in the Big 12. Uh, We will look real quick at the top 25 polls. Number one, Georgia, Virginia Tech, two, Ohio State, three, USC, number four, Oklahoma, number five, North Carolina, six, Clemson, seven, uh, Texas A&M is eighth. They are five and one in the West, and of course they have tiebreakers over two of the tired their top competition. Uh, they're coming off a 49-3 win at Mississippi State. Florida after the loss to Georgia is nine, Florida State ten, LSU is eleven, Ole Miss is twelve, Alabama thirteen, Miami is fourteen. Oregon 15 after their 27-21 win over Cal. And then our nemesis, Louisiana, is number 16 after beating Georgia State. Memphis is number 17 after falling to Cincinnati. Virginia beats Pitt to move up to number 18. Penn State is 19th. Washington lost to Stanford, and so they fall to number 20. Tennessee enters the top 25. Um... As well, this is the first episode where they've been in the top 25. As we, we skipped last week in end of the game. I didn't do an episode because we had a bye week. Texas over Texas Tech, and they are number 22nd. Michigan has fallen to their arch rivals, Michigan State, so they dropped to number 23. Ohio State is 24 after the win over Kansas. And there's the Commodores. Vanderbilt is number 25. Uh, others receiving votes. We are we are um, still kind of sitting there about six, seven spots out. Let's see, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. We would be number 32 right now. Uh, but that's a look at the coaches poll. Uh, the Heisman Watch. Who is tops on the Heisman? It's Charbonnet of Michigan. He is number one, followed by Zamir White, Lyndon J. Dixon, C.J. Verdell, and Rashawn Davey is fifth. Um, we won't, I'm not going to spend much time on the award semifinalists, but I would like to go just to see if we have anybody on, you know, near the top of any of these lists. And it doesn't look like it, it we do. Not a big surprise because we've not really put up a lot. We're starting to improve. Um, our numbers are starting to get better statistically. But uh, now we do have a defender who's up for the Buckets Award, uh, Gunter. Um, but he's on the other side of the ball, so... Um, so, but because it took a, it took us a few weeks to kind of hit or you know find our stride, so no big surprise we don't have anybody there. Um, our opponent this week 
is South Alabama, which we're coming off of the win over Louisiana Monroe. Uh, I would recommend you would watch that game. It was a very exciting game. We had to kind of hang on at the end. Had to uh, get a c- couple of crucial first downs. But uh, we ended up winning over Louisiana Monroe. South Alabama, first of all, we'll look at their schedule. Uh, the Jaguars, they are 3-4. and four. Uh, they are coming off a loss to Arkansas State. Arkansas State, of course, very good offense, not great defense, and that showed in that game in South Alabama Falls, 45-35. They did beat Texas State in overtime. However, they lost to ULM, and they did get wins over Georgia State, San Diego State, but started the season with losses to Southern Miss and Bowling Green. So they're a respectable team. As we'll see, overall, their overall rating, their talent is better than ours. They have a B minus overall. Um, defense is also a B minus. So um, they, they're, you know, that's we're not good enough to just overlook any opponent. Uh, so you can't just say, oh, well, they're three and four. There's, you know, well, we're we may be we may be eight and one, but uh, we do not have that. <clears throat> we don't have a good enough team to where we can just. Uh, make any assumptions so uh we will real quick uh look at the, their depth chart to see what we are going up against so south alabama they've got a quarterback who's an 84 uh davis and avery the running backs high 70s um receiving core they've got a decent receiving core uh 85 82 and then some 70s there 77 tight end um, on the offensive line, it's, you know, it's not, you know, decent Sunbelt offensive line. Here's where we're looking at, though, the defensive ends. Uh, Strong Jr. is an 82. And on the right, they have the Sheriff, who is a 76, but he is injured. So I, he may not be playing this week. Uh, if he does not, then their right end, Coleman, is a 68. Defensive tackles are solid. They've got an 80 and then a couple 76s. Uh, their left outside linebacker is an 86, the middle linebacker an 84, and the right outside linebacker an 85. So that is probably the most balanced linebacking unit that we've played this year. Uh, cornerbacks, 80, 76. Uh, free safety, 75. Strong safety, Galman is an 86. So they are going to be a difficult opponent um, to face. Let's look at their what is the coach uh, info. We'll look at their coach situation, what their uh, style of play is. Because uh, to be honest, I'm not sure. Uh, Steve Campbell. I think this is he's this is not his first season. But let's look at how he he plays. First of all, an offense. They run a multiple offense, so it'll be kind of a pro style attack. Um, they will be running the ball more than they'll be throwing it. They'll be running the ball about 60% of the time. Uh, they're somewhat aggressive. Uh, they are a normal no-huddle style, so they will run the no-huddle occasionally. They run a 3-4, which might be good for us because their defensive tackles were solid. Um, so that is a look at South Alabama. Let's go ahead and start the game, shall we? All right, there we go. Uh, if we look at South Carolina, our Coastal Carolina, our offense, we average winning 36-23. Well, they actually average losing, um, but uh, they've played some tough teams. Um, looking at their defense, they are not great at defending the pass. Um, so I'm hoping that that will translate to a good day for us. We do have some prospects, or South Alabama has some prospects in town. Lorenzo Lewis and Andrew Smith, so let's ruin the, that party. Uh, their top players, all defensive players. Uh, their two outside linebackers and their strong safety uh, are their top players. Of course, highly Biscardi and likely are our, our top players. Um, Sheriff has a knee cartilage tear. He's still probable. Uh, and, and voicing their cornerback is also probable. But uh, maybe their play will be affected. We can, we can hope, right? We can hope. So uh, it looks like a sunny day in South Alabama. So we're going to come out there in our milkman attire. Uh, it might be kind of tough to... I might should have looked at changing South Alabama's uniforms. They were wearing white pants uh, as well as ours, but it might not stand out as much as we would like. They also have the white helmets. <clears throat> as you can see, we have, we, our pass defense is worse than theirs. 
Of course, you know how NCAA is. Um, teams just throw more than they should. And here we see South Alabama come running out. It looked like they were going to run out to the fog. South in your mouth. That's something. Um, <laughs> that must be something that they... The uh, college football revamp mod team added. I'm, I'm, they've not really done much. Obviously, Coastal Carolina has been updated uh, as we are in Hancock Whitney Stadium. Um, actually, kind of a cool looking little stadium. But yeah, the Sun Belt has probably not been touched much, but uh, well, it hasn't. Maybe some of the stadiums, perhaps. But obviously, uniforms have not yet been updated. Um, so it will be low on the priority list. <clears throat> Gonna hand this off. Last game, we kind of came out throwing, and maybe that's why, it could be why it took uh, Miller some time to get acclimated. He was not sharp early on. And there, Reese gets seven yards on the carry. All right, we got 34 here. First drive of the game. South Alabama blitzes one, and Miller can't find his target, so we'll have to punt. Miller has again got off to a, a poor start. He's missing his targets. Here he drops back, looks, fires across the middle. This time he finds Hiley. Good old reliable Javon Hiley, who gets the first down. Going to try a little glide motion play here, and why shallow? See if we can get the three yards. South Alabama blitzes, and Miller makes him pay. Finds Riley for a seven-yard catch and the first down. That's going to get us down inside the 10. Going with the slot formation, going to try and hand it off and power our way through. And, yeah, the pulling guard there uh, made an important block that allowed Reese White to get into the end zone. So we score first, go up 7 to nothing on South Alabama. South Alabama scores, so it's 7-7. Seven to seven. Probably going to be one of those kind of games where I'm going to have to score, like just like the uh, ULM game. Oh, Reese White, I thought he was going to get away. So now it's third and ten. We need a play here from Miller. We need a play from you, Miller. Offensive line gives him plenty of time. Oh, he finds, uh, who is that? That's uh, 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 Jackson. He found Jackson across the middle for 18 yards and a first down. Way to go, Miller. Uh, this is where McCall would take off running and probably not get the first down, but but he gives um, Jackson enough time to get himself open. Yeah, there's a little... <laughs> if you look at some of the highlights, you saw <clears throat> Miller's dumpy pass that went to nobody. Third and seven. Miller drops back. Throws. Oh, he's got a man in the corner, and Riley catches it for the touchdown. I, I don't know why Riley's running that route. I, I, that's not. I think he's supposed to be running a hitch over there. In any case, he's in the end zone, <laughs> and so we take the lead. Calling the flat concept here, and Miller. On the hitch to the right, he finds Hiley, who gets 12 yards on the reception. That's going to make it first down at 10. Third and five. I'm going to run mesh. This probably is a really terrible idea, but let's see what happens. So Miller drops back. And nobody's open. Oh, he, he, somebody made a move, and Miller tried to get him the ball, but it was dropped. So kicking this field goal, fourth down at five. This will put us up two scores. We'll get, make it 17 to seven. So we go up by 10 with two and a half minutes to go in the first half. So we get the ball back at our own nine. South Alabama did not score. So about a minute and a half. So this is kind of a tricky little situation here. We, we, we Obviously we want to score as, oh, he finds Likely on the slant and the defender made a pass. So Likely got free for 19 yards. Big play there. Like I said, we want to score, but we also, if we don't, we want to make sure that we don't leave South Alabama with enough time to score. So third down and eight here. 
Oh, this is going to least if we don't get the first down, South Alabama is going to have plenty of time. But look at that. How in the world does that happen? Javon Hiley, wide open. Big catch, big gain, and now we're in scoring position with plenty of time on the clock. What a, I don't, that was a break in coverage. South Alabama, somebody didn't roll the coverage like they were supposed to. So let's just look at it because I'm here. You see, he runs the corner and just it was man coverage, right? It looks like because look at Z. Look at Z out here. Nobody like he the uh, deep safety. That's the corner. Corner's playing back off the line, but he goes with him. Nobody goes with Javon Hiley. Who was supposed to be guard? Was it the free safety who was supposed to be mar uh, guarding him? Looks like maybe he's... No, he... I don't know what he's doing. Nobody guards. It's... I mean, my... Uh, the only other guy is this guy. But watch. He just lets Hiley go to the corner. And then he drifts to the middle. So it looks like he's playing a deep zone in the middle. Yeah. Third and ten now. We're at the 12-yard line. Miller... Plenty of time in trouble now, though. Throws it away. Probably the right call. But that'll make it fourth down. We'll have to kick a field goal. So, Biscardi here to make it 20 to 7. It's only about 11 seconds to go in the half. And kick it up. And it's good. So, hopefully, South Alabama doesn't have enough time. Oh, look at this. Troy leads Louisiana 14 to 10. Please, Troy. Please. We have the ball here. I think something happened. I think we were supposed to have the ball starting the second half, but I think maybe there was a fumble and uh, South Alabama got a field goal out of it. So we're up 20 to 10 now, six and a half ish to go. Handoff goes to uh, Reese White, who picks up 10 yards. That'll make it second down in inches. All right, second and one. I'm going to go ahead and throw it here. They drop eight into coverage. And they hit, he, he finds Hiley on the spot route, and he picks up 11 yards. H stick here. Miller looks... Oh, uh, Miller. Oh, I thought that was going to be a pick six. He just floated that out there. So another stall drive. We're having to kick a lot of field goals. That's not good. This will be our third. We've got to start putting these in the end zone, finishing these drives here. 23-10, third quarter. We kind of luck out, and South Alabama does not score. Uh, so we're up 23-10 still, ball with the ball. Minute and a half to go in the third. Handoff to Reese White, who gets a big gain. 16 yards, near midfield now. We're going to run smash here, but... We're going to tag Bedgood with an in route here. And he finds Bedgood. And Bedgood breaks the first tackle. And he gets 16 yards. That's a first down. Really, that's just a good throw by Miller. It was, the defense was there. Second down and two. I'm going to throw this one because I feel like I feel okay about getting the first down on third and two. Oh, he's got Hiley right there. Yes! Ten yards. First and ten. Uh, new school record on receptions in a season. He set the record last year with 76. He just broke it with 77. So there we are, end of the third quarter. One quarter to play. We're up 23-10. We have the ball. We're in good position. Feeling pretty good right now, but we need to finish drives. We are not finishing drives, and we are keeping South Alabama within within striking distance. First and 10 at the 19-ish. Second down and eight. South Alabama showing a safety blitz, but he drops back. They only rush three, but then look at that. Highly across the middle again. That's going to be a 14-yard catch. That'll make it first and goal at about the five. Well, you know what? We're going to hand this off. I was going to do like a kind of a slants play, but <clears throat> we're going to hand this off. And Bennett finds the end zone. Finally, we finish a drive. It's been kind of frustrating, but we get into the end zone there. That'll make it 30 to 10. And now South Alabama has a big task ahead of them if they want to get anything from this game. 
Well, South Alabama scores, so they, they keep themselves with, you know, <laughs> they're at about arm's length. So we need to keep them there. Here's the handoff. Uh, Reese White picks up 11 yards on the carry. That'll be a first down. Not even sure what our passing numbers are. It's not been what they has been, but we're winning the game. Oh, but there's a, on the fade route there, he finds uh, Bedgood. So we got to 250 yards. So we're calling sale. <clears throat> I'm not I'm not super crazy about calling this play with this team, but we're gonna do it. He, oh he's got him. Yeah. He highly ran a nice route, got away from his man, gets the first down. 17 yard reception there. First and ten at the eleven. I decided I'm just gonna kinda let Miller throw this here. Goes into the corner. I think he got uh, McCoy. That is a touchdown. 11-yard pass into the back of the end zone. And that'll give us a 36-17 to lead pending the extra point. Well, USA scores. So it's 37-24. Miller here throws to his left. I'm really just trying to get Miller 300 yards. I think that does it. Fred Jackson with a 6-yard catch. Well, that loss means that Miller does not have 300 yards. So we're going to try and get him there. Oh, and he finds Bedgood for a big gain right there. That's 20 yards inside the 10 now. Here we see Bedgood just... For, he was Yeah, he was running a hitch. And then after Miller doesn't have anyone, he gets himself open and Miller gets in the ball. First down. What I called is Y corner, and it looks like I'm going to be set up for this because they've kind of packed into the middle there, if you, as you can see. Uh, they really don't want me to run that dive play. Uh, but they've got six guys right there near the box, so we're going to go ahead and throw this ball, see what happens. And he finds Fred Jackson, but he does not get across the line, so we're second and goal here. So we've called our slot formation with the two tight ends over there. Uh, we're just going to hand this off, try to plow ahead, power into the end zone. And we're going to let the clock roll down. And Bennett scores. Coastal Carolina will get 44 points today with the extra point. And a good win over South Alabama if we can hang on. All right, that is the game. Big win there for uh, Coastal Carolina. Um, James Miller, 32-49. I wouldn't call it a great game, but no picks, although he tried to. 328 yards, couple touchdowns. So good, solid win for CCU and the Chanticleers. So we'll look at some highlights here. We see Reese White plow ahead. He gets the touchdown here. He throws it out to the right. Miller throws it out to the right to Anthony Riley for the score. And there in the back of the end zone, nervous times, he finds Pierre McCoy. Pretty sure that's McCoy's first touchdown as a, as a Chanticleer. Here's the handoff to Bennett there. So let's look at the team stats here. We've got uh, 27 first downs to their 13. We outgained them by over 100. Didn't feel like that all the time, but we did. They, our defense held them to 39 yards rushing. That was big. That might have been the difference in the game right there. We had 147. Uh, they did get 332 yards passing, but they were only 3 for 9 on third downs, whereas we were 10 of 14. So that right there, another big difference. Um, if, you can, if you can get 70% on third down, you're going to be tough to beat. Uh, we did have the one turnover. Yeah, that, was, that must have been that fumble. Pretty sure coming out of the half, we fumbled the kickoff, and they were able to get points out of it. It was only a field goal, but... Um, yeah, might have, might have, that might have been costly had it been worse. Um, so, yeah, that was the game. Good performance. Um, good win. We'll look at real quick at the player stats for offense. Miller, 32-49, as we said. 328 yards, two touchdowns, no picks. 65% completion. That's pretty good, um, for, especially for a true freshman in our offense. Uh, rushing, uh, Reese White had over 100 yards rushing and Bennett added 56. Um, Miller took a couple of sacks, lost 13 yards, and Malloy had one carry for three. 
receiving. I mean, Javon Hiley, what a game. Nine catches for 130 yards. Uh, he did not get a touchdown. Probably deserved one. But um, he was Mr. Reliable today. Bedgood made some big plays, caught six balls for 78. Riley had five catches for 34 with a touchdown. Uh, Fred Jackson chimed in with 39 yards. Decent, uh, decent dis- distribution today. Um, likely the tight end caught three balls for 32. Pierre McCoy caught a couple for 17 yards. So good day. Big win for Coastal Carolina. Make sure that you tune in next week. Um, as we try to continue our winning ways and hopefully we can get some luck and win the Sunbelt Conference. But this is Will Force One signing off. I'll see you guys next time.